Oh, tell me about Dr. Amadea, would you? I, he, that's all we can say that he was so. He would give the last of himself, you know, yeah. for the faith. I remember one day, I remember one day we went to, we were trying to get um, an assembly in Roaring Creek. And um, we had, I think we had about um, seven. We had about six Baha'is. No, I think we had about seven. I don't remember. And then I went with somebody. And when we went, we managed to get one or two more Baha'is. Anyhow, we brought it to eight. Okay. And um, afterwards, because doctor's car, he never had any spare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. Somebody pulled me off. I just oh. break speed record. Well, at least <laughs> I, I feel good now because Crystal is worried about you getting the message. Uh, and, and all day, and I keep this, you know, this is joy. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Well, pa. And I'm, I'm right here now, I'm worried and I'm waiting for Christelle to come back to ask her, did you ever get to the job? Hello, my dear. Hi, dear. So See you after so long. Well, it happens that I, I was at the um, deep end in the night. So Doris told me And I got my work. schedule down. Oh, good. Christelle, it's just like one day. forget. And I believe, Doris no. gave me a number where you could be reached. And I rang the number. And I tell you, Joyce will live there. And I'm going to send me the room. Time was getting short. We had about maybe six Baha'is and we were going and I remember I went in my car and I can't remember who was with me. And we tried and we got up to eight Baha'is but we couldn't make we couldn't make the um, we got seven or eight. And but doc and doctor couldn't go, he usually go out every weekend with his car. <laughs> I think he was out of a job. I was having a hard time getting a job because I never wanted to give him a license. At least one doctor, I think, was, was somebody was sort of giving him trouble keeping him out. So he never had much money or anything, so he had a car and his car needed, he didn't have any spare tire. So when I came back and I told him we never made the assembly, the next day he got in his car without a spare and went. <laughs> When that when he came back, he said, "We have the assembly," <laughs> mm. and we tried so hard to find, you know, some Baha'is to make that assembly, but we couldn't. It was very, uh, very dedicated. Oh, and, sure. and, and the most of what I know about the Baha'i faith, I learned it from, from the doctor. Mm -hmm. That is why I used to to be behind anywhere where where he used to go with, to have meetings. I was right there with them because I I learned I know I, I, I could learn more from him than from Dr. Oh, he was very good. What sort of things did he say to people? What? When he taught people, what did he say to them? We went teaching once. Why was he so effective? Uh, we went teaching once and he said, Well, we are Baha'is and we want to teach you about the Baha'i faith. Do you want to hear about the Baha'i faith? And people would say, Sure, sure, I believe people are so they're like that. So um, and he started teaching them about the um, about the mission of Bahola and the purpose of his mission. And one lady said, "You know something? I am just sick and tired of you people bringing in a different religion all the time, talking about this and that." And he said, "Well, we believe in the oneness of God, the oneness of humanity." And we believe that there's only one religion, but if you have something else, can you please enlighten me? And she was like, oh my God, where did he come from? <laughs> <laughs> and she, she tried and she talked about Jesus Christ and he, was, he said, yes, so we believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, but have you heard about Baha'u'llah? And she couldn't even pronounce the name. She said, well, if you look in the Bible, he said that he will come back in the glory of God, and Bahá'u'lláh means the glory of God. He came as a station of, like, in the station of this um, father, and he was my mentor. He, we, we used to spend hours, I used to dictate to him, and he used to correct me, and we used to argue, and he used to correct me. I was, <laughs> I was a rebel, and he used to pour cold water on me. 
uh, he have a way of putting words that nobody, I don't find anybody else with that style. Because when he tells this lady, well, me, me enlighten us. If you don't believe in Baha'u'llah, if you don't believe in the oneness of mankind and the one, there's, there's supposed to be one religion, then enlighten us, maybe you have a better idea. And I was like, how oh, dare this man, you know? <laughs> and she was like, where did he come from? And he was a very good teacher, that man. Oh. I didn't spend much time with him because he wasn't in my district. Mm -hmm. He was mostly here. So where, were I, you, where were you? I was from Dangria. Oh, okay. So he he only go for summer projects, mm -hmm. and when he can't make it, his his wife he sent his wife. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have much time with him, but the time I remember that summer we used to spend hours debating and arguing, and he used to put me in my place, and mm -hmm. I used to argue with him. And he he is a, I never see him lose his cool, mm -hmm. and when I become a Baha'i, he said. Mm -hmm. It is essential for every person who wants to be a Baha'i. He never said Baha'i, he said Baha'i, something like that. Uh -huh. it, 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 it is essential for everybody who wants to be a Baha'i to learn the covenant. That's what he taught us new Baha'is. And I would never declare another person without that person knowing and learning about the covenant. That's what he taught me and I stick with it. I would never enroll up to now if I am to teach a person today. And he is turned on by what I'm saying. And remember what Dr. Madia said, the covenant is the one that keeps us together. That person has to know and learn about the covenant first. And I still do that. Mm -hmm. Because he, that's what he thought of. As, as you, you are a you. Are you. And you know what? I used to be so concerned with the that we have on the lunch of the carry. He's always saying, let's, let's share it with them, let's share I said, but it would be enough, doctor. <laughs> I said, well, he's supposed to go be enough, or we can't eat it in front of them, or we can go somewhere else, and he said, let's, let's, let's share it, let's share it. And he said, let's, let's share it anyhow. And we share it, and we offer them, and when we finish, we feel so good. Everybody gets a little bit of whatever we had, you know. Mm. He taught me a good lesson there, you know, in sharing. And I do trips. Once we went to 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 on the Corozal in Chai Bay, Chai Bay in the Corozal district, and I was there with them. But that time I had my trumpet, and I, and I took my trumpet along with me. So when we got there, doctor said, "Well, now you can play play a few pieces, so we can um, uh, bring up bring out the the villagers." So, but there was a, a one of the villagers who, who, who could play the guitar very well and I asked him to accompany me and so I, I used to play some pieces and that boy accompanied me accompanied me very well man and we a lot of people gathered and mm. it was lively <laughs> so and uh, uh, when we had a, a, a little uh, what you call it a, a ten minutes um, recess. Uh, Ruhi, the Persian, you knew her? Uh -huh. Ruhi was with us too. And Ruhi asked the same boy, he said, sing, sing, sing one of your songs, now I would like to hear one of your native songs. And this boy was so, he was ashamed, he didn't know what to sing. What. So I told him one, one, of, one song that I believe he would know, I said, do you know him, Cuando Lejos? Me, me encuentre de ti? He said, yes. So I told him, sing that and, and I will help you. And I tell you that the boy start to sing it. Cuando lejos me encuentre de ti, cuando quieras que esté yo contigo, no hallarás ni un recuerdo de mí, ni tendrás más amores conmigo. But I sing the, the second, you know, and I tell you when, when I looked at Ruhi, I saw the tears falling from, Ruhi was standing and the boy, and I, I saw the tears falling from Ruhi's eyes. So when we finished it, I told her, but Ruhi, why do you cry? You don't know the, the, the meaning of those words. 
she said, no, I don't know. But these songs, she said, have some, some they are so sentimental, she said. <laughs> I know they are love songs. <laughs> and, and that song is, in Spanish, they call it desprecio. When, when you, you, I don't know how you say that in English, when you... Desperate? No, no, des like, like if you are in love with someone and, and you got some misunderstandings and now uh, the um, desperation means despise you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh, okay. That that's what, what that song meant, um, desperation. So um, Ruhi cried, I told her. She was like that. <laughs> yes, she, 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 she was soft. A man came came on the scene from Jamaica, you know, but he wanted to, 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 to tell the crowd his, his experience as being a Baha'i. But they wanted the Spanish people because the, 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 the people listening were mostly Spanish speaking. So doctor said, Mr. Laco, you, you, you better help us. Oh God, I, I quickly said my, my prayer quickly, the <laughs> remover of difficulties. <laughs> I said, and do you know that when I went up the, on the stage and that man started to, and I started to, 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 to translate. translate what he was saying without a, 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 a pause, right to the end, I said, oh God, why must I not believe in, I have a, a very, Great belief in that prayer, you know, that removal of difficulty. I scary. tell you. Coming in, Gladys was there, and about seven of us, and coming back to Belize, doctor was driving, and he said, um, oh, look at that little animal. So, so um, Gladys looked, and she saw that it was a little, he said, but doctor, that's a little dog. Doctor said, but isn't the dog an animal? <laughs> but, they were expecting a wild animal, you know, maybe like a fox or mm -hmm. something. <laughs> That's the same. But isn't the dog an animal? <laughs> Hello. You met him already, right? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi. Yes, my doctor. We missed him very much. We had doctor. I used to drive so fast. Oh, oh yes, yeah, you used to drive very fast. Oh, one day there was something right across the road. And I tell you, when I realized I got something from him, and he's trying to stop at me, he can't stop. When, when we realized this vehicle was right across the road, with no light. So we had a rough time. Got shook up there. Doctor said, well, I don't go to ask the police anymore. Can the doctor, the police tell me, 
that I was wrong. <laughs> he said he was right the whole time. <laughs> 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 and he wanted to know why this man of his was not the police of If I were you, I'd just forget about it. He wanted to call this case and they won't call it. Mm. If I were you, I'd just forget about that. <laughs> Never got his classes. Well, I have always been to his um, his, his uh, office, you know, at, uh, where he, he, he attends to people. Anytime I feel sick, I go there, and doctor would never accept a, a cent from me. I said, but doctor, I give me my medicine, he, uh, he give me injection, and I said, well, well, doctor, how much can I give you now? Don't worry. No. I said something. He wouldn't accept that. I said something. Tell me something. When you realize that you want to be and you are ready, that he had to work late. He's working at night and come home late. And I know he's tired. Sometimes I wonder if he was tired. Because he was tired. He doesn't eat much. He would take any, any little bite and say, well, you are ready to reduce anything. Take it. Take it. And I remember that he was very particularly when James was sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was sick. So, 
His talent contained when he became Baha'i. George, George who, is, who right now is not much of a Baha'i. His talents have improved so much that he, it is it, 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 it got him right out of the thing. Mm. <laughs> and this thing went to the way, but anyhow. Mm. Um, Bob Riddle said that was true. That everything just worked out for him because he was a tailor by trade. And he used to do the choreograph, the dancing. Mm. And after that, he went to the stage and he said he was doing really so good. Everything that he liked, he was doing really as a hobby. Um, everything worked out so well for him. And he said, all the while, he said, I like so much about the stage. I like a lot of things. But one thing kept me back. I always feel that they are putting Mahola ahead of Jesus. And I couldn't take that. You see, I couldn't. And I, I th although I think they were telling him all the while, but mm. or maybe they didn't make it clear or he didn't care. You know? And suddenly, I guess when the time came, <laughs> he said, no, he understands everything. He understands that he doesn't have to drop off Jesus. He understands that the Baha'is really think highly as highly of Jesus as they think of Baha'u'llah and all the other materials, then he was able to become a Baha'i. I can't believe that that's what was keeping him back, mm. <laughs> you know, but that's what he said. Mm. Yeah. There, there were, well, I know Sandra took a long time to become Baha'i, but it wasn't that she was not convinced. She was convinced all the while, Sandra mm. Cowie, but she felt that she would help the faith better not the one that lives in Kyle. I guess you can go to the Buddhist. 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 Things are really bad. Mm -hmm. so, bad. Things are really bad. He wanted to go back. Yeah. So, they, so they 
invited me to the ranch and I went to the ranch and he said, turn the vehicle around. So we were going back to town. We, have a, we were having a pleasant time, but he wasn't too enjoying himself because he was craving that, you know what? And <laughs> so he went and he was, he, was, he was driving like I don't know what. And he was yelling at her to tell her to stop because she's going to crash the vehicle. But she didn't care because she had the window up. And he
obviously they were part of the highway too. He was part of the highway. And then he talks about more to come. He says, uh, God will send us another comforter. And in the original uh, Greek that he uses, the word comforter is parakletos. The word, the prefix para means uh, one life, like a paramedic or a paralegal. No. A paramedic is not really a doctor, but he's like a doctor. So a parakletos, a kletos is a holy one or a prophet. So in essence, what, what Christ was saying is, I will send you another prophet like me. If you read in the statements of Moses, you will find that Moses promised that God will send you another prophet like me. Almost the exact same quote. Unto him you must hearken. So this is the hado. This is the covenant of God.